we turn now to our in-studio guest sitting to my right, the only driver ever to win the Indianapolis 500, the Daytona 500, and the Formula One World Championship, just one of the many, many accolades of one of the all-time greats from the racing world, Mario Andretti. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Rich. Thanks for being here, Mario. Thank you for having me. Now, you just were, because we were watching Dustin Johnson just go through the paces here, yeah. swinging around. Now, you said you have played Augusta National. Have you played I've it? I've played Augusta, yes. Who I took you? Them. Can you drop was the name? It, yeah. Well, it was in mid, mid-80s. Okay. And uh, it was uh, one of the CEOs at uh, Texaco. Mm -hmm. He would have an event with 16 CEOs. You know, so he invited me uh, to play, and he said, oh, we're all hackers, and all so on and so forth. But mm -hmm. uh, in the practice round the uh, day before, mm -hmm. I honestly broke 100. I had a 98, an honest 98 of Augusta. <laughs> when you say That's honest. my claim to fame in golf <laughs> all time. And uh, the caddy just, uh, I don't get, I bought him, I don't know how many cartons of cigarettes and so forth. He would not let me cheat. And, uh, but... So now, when now you say, I can identify what's going on there. You see? <laughs> sure. Now, when you say an honest ninety-eight, so you would normally just okay pick the pick the ball up. Yeah, that's and I do like you know mid nineties, you know, but you know, you know how that goes. But yeah, yeah, well, you, what you're referring to is the phrase that the best stick in your bag is the pencil. <laughs> yes. That's what you're referring to, Mario that's Andretti. Right. Yes, yeah, because the erasers on yeah, the back. There's certain averages that you you know. But you, you can't do that in racing, right? I mean, there, there's no way to. Cheat and race is it well? No, not not really cheat and racing, not right? Not really, you're either up front or in the back, you know, type of thing. It's uh, right. It's clear. And now you're clear. you are in the driver's seat of the specially built Honda two seat Indy car that's run at the start of every Indy car race that leads the parade lap since 2010. You that's been part of that. You've been driving around. It's my new career. Okay, well, it's not a bad <laughs> career. Um, so, who have you driven around? Oh gosh! Uh, the latest one was actually Ken Griffith Jr. Okay. Just uh, in Long and uh, St. Pete. Yeah. And then uh, we had uh, well, Lady Gaga for the hundredth anniversary <laughs> of Indianapolis. You know, so there's been, a, there's been a there's been an Amaru Andretti Lady Gaga summit that that's happened. You it's sort of actually, what a what a wonderful lady! I just loved her as a performer, but uh, as a person, I mm -hmm. really. You know, I really had so much respect for her. I just loved her even more. You know, she was so congenial. So, so Griffey Jr., um, I have a list here. Is it Aaron, did you arrive around Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. And it was uh, uh, Steph Curry and uh, his wife, Aisha. Uh, they, they they were really, uh, it was fun, actually, to, because they were just, you know. And and Chris Brockman. And Chris Brockman's on that list Chris from two years. Chris Brockman, yes, indeed. <laughs> from two years ago? Yeah. Very distinguished honor, Mario. Thank you very much. Now, um, it's going to be uh, tomorrow. Rich Eisen? It's to me. It's to me. <laughs> the honor goes to me tomorrow. And who has been the most nervous getting in with uh, you? Where, uh, did you have to talk somebody into getting in? Actually, I think probably me. Ken Griffey. He was not very talkative. And, and I can always tell when they're more talkative after the fact. Mm -hmm. You know, then I know that they're, they have. You know they're apprehended about it right and um this shouldn't be because uh it's gonna be a fun thing um yeah but that's, i enjoy this... doing it uh obviously i give it all i got you know i mean i reserve, <laughs> I reserve too much so are you saying you only know right. one speed mario andretti is that what you're saying <laughs> yeah. is that what you just said you to know, people come to me and say oh he's my friend you know really let him have it i said everybody gets the same you know, that's what Honda wants me to do. Sure. Give everybody the same ride. And okay. That's what I do. Well, that's what I try to do for Honda do, on this I show do every day, Mark. myself, too. Okay. <laughs> so, how fast? Well, because you're taking Ken Griffey Jr. and others around on an oval course, right? Sometimes. Well, that, most of the, the time. Of course. Uh, okay. St. Pete was, it, was oh, a road course. Okay. Because we do all. We do, you know, Super Speedway, you know, short. Uh, short oval, you know, we'd be in Phoenix uh, a couple okay. of weeks. Okay. Right. Uh, mile oval and. But let, so, but there's going to be some right right turns for me tomorrow, oh, right? Oh, yes, yes. Right, left, you know, you'll be doing all this. <laughs> <laughs> How fast are we going to go tomorrow? I always say about two, 300. Come on know. now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably about, about 165, depends. You know, depends. If we had some tailwind, it would be even quicker. Tailwind? Now. What are you well, talking you know, about? We're on the shoreline. You know, there's always wind there. You know? Now, how has this changed since the first 
Grand Prix in, wow. in, in Long Beach, 1977, that you won, obviously. Or the first one you were at was, you were at the first one in 75, correct? Uh, yes, uh -huh. yes. Uh, the course has changed. The geography of the course has changed because of, uh, obviously, progress at buildings, convention center, and all that mm -hmm. going on. So that, that's nothing unusual, mm -hmm. you know, for an event that's been going on for, what, 43 years now? It'll be the 43rd. So, uh, but it's, um, the character has remained you know, of the course, and uh, the challenge is always there. So um, over the years, um, I I think I raced it almost every configuration there. So, um, mm -hmm. but um, I like it now. I go around the fountain, you know, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You're thinking you're in Monaco, you know, I mean, in Monaco, you go around the swimming pool. Here you go around the fountain. Ma, I mean, I can't even imagine what it would be like racing in Monaco back in the day. Did you ever, was Grace Kelly around when you yes, were there indeed. too? Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, I met her. Yes, indeed. Yeah, what a come, What do you got for me on that front? I mean, come on. Grace Kelly? Eh, yes. That's as beautiful. That's, 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 that's like looking into the sun, right? Yes, indeed, yeah. Did you yeah, take, did, did you race her around at all? No, no, no. They didn't have a two-seater. They didn't have a two-seater back in that Honda day? was not involved at that point. Right. Did Now, did anybody go, uh, you know, Play a little baccarat at night, something like oh, that. Oh yeah, oh yes, yeah. What was that it's like, Mario? Casino, Jimmy's. Uh, it, you know, it's very subdued there. In Monaco? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. If you go and gambling there, you mm -hmm. don't scream or anything. Nothing like Vegas. Vegas, ah, ah, you know, you mm -hmm. throw the dice and all that. In Monaco, you know, the, you know, you just like a Bond movie, more proper, like a know? James Bond movie yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Did you have to tux it up? Tux. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's the. It, did love that, you know. Mm -hmm. If you do that, mm -hmm. obviously you get, you right. know, you get nice, better, more, more. Uh, you get acceptance. More acceptance over there. Well, I want to take a quick break, and I want to stroll down a little bit more memory lane with you about your about your racing days when you were winning races and going against some some equally all time greats as well. And I'm going to play a, a video from the 1971 Indianapolis 500 of an interview that uh, was conducted uh, with you by one of the all-time greats uh, from the interviewing business. That's coming up next in 60 seconds with Mario Andretti here. He's gonna take me around in that uh, specially built Honda two-seat Indy car tomorrow going two, 300 miles an hour. Who, who knew that? So I'm gonna go blackout tomorrow. Is that what you're saying, Brockman? Did you pass out? Did you pass out? Uh, it was close. I don't do well at high Has speeds. anyone passed out? Oh, we had a few just Sort of uh, being a little bit wobbly when I come out of the car, but uh, okay, that, that's good. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's that's good. good. <laughs> right, we're back more without Mauro Andretti here in sixty seconds on the Rich Eisen Show. The Long Beach Grand Prix is this weekend right here in Southern California. Honda-powered drivers and teams have won the Grand Prix of Long Beach 11 times in 17 appearances, including a seven-year victory streak in championship auto racing teams competition from 96 to 02 in the specially built Honda two-seat Indy car driven by Mario Andretti. Uh, leading the parade laps will be zipping me around the course tomorrow, and Mario here still uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, I want to play for you, Mario. I think, do you know where I'm going with this one? The 1971 Indianapolis 500? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. This is, uh, this is, this is, you're about to hear Jim McKay at the microphone misidentifying at start the man who is interviewing Mario Andretti and give a listen to the end about who was doing the talking. Okay, a tour of the courts with Peter Refson. There is the wreckage of one of the cars in this recent crash. That's Gordon Johncock's car. But let's get a report now. Chris Economaki has Mario Andretti. Mario, what happened? Well, obviously, there was some oil, I think, that was spilled by Krisilov's car. And uh, when we arrived on the scene, uh, Johncock spun in front of me, hit the wall, and rico ricocheted into my path. And I was trying to uh, kind of pinch it down close uh, so I wouldn't get into them, but uh, I had nothing I could do. What about the traffic? The faster car is coming up with the slower ones now. Well, that's a uh, normal uh, pace of the race. I mean, this you see everywhere. That's no particular problem. Thank you very much. Mario Andretti out of the 1971 Indianapolis 500-mile race. Well, and Jim McKay would then say that was David Letterman <laughs> yeah, interviewing how, you. I said that's your first famous interview. Was no, no, it is, but I'm by the kidding. way, I'm only kidding, only kidding. It is true. He was covering the event right there. Yeah, he was with you. Did you? Did you? He was the know weather. at the time of who who this guy was he coming was the, up. At, he was the weatherman in Indianapolis. In one, yeah, in Indianapolis, one of the station. 
and he was so colorful, obviously, that uh, that's where his career exploded But uh, after that. But uh, I think he was the best weatherman they ever had. <laughs> it was always sunshine. Yeah, he's always nice. I, I know. <laughs> and then, obviously, I'm sure you went on his show, right? Yes, yeah. Right, I mean, a handful of times. And now he's also uh, yeah, one of the top owner, yeah. owners. Co-owner, yeah, with uh, Ray Hall Letterman. Is he going to be in, in Long Beach? Best I'm you know? sure he will. You will never recognize him, though, with his special hair that he has now. He's got this monster, yeah. like, Santa Claus-like beard. Makes you think, beard. like, Christmas, you know. I know, it's like Santa Claus yeah. right now. Yeah, he is. But he's, di- he's, a, he's, a, he's a real... Racing diehard. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think he. I think for sure. Yeah, it's, it's for real. So, who back in the day did you ever get into like a fight with somebody? In, fight? Yeah, pit row or something. Always, like that. Uh, always ran. You know, you always was... ran away with. <laughs> almost everybody. That did you have a fight? Ri- me was bigger than me. Did you have a rival? <laughs> oh yeah. Would you Over say? the years, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and those are uh, the great rival- rivalries. You know, with the AJ Foyt and uh, the Unsers and. There's always somebody that's a thorn on your side, and mm-hmm. that's your rival, you know. Right. But uh, there's always someone that uh, you have to deal with no matter what race you're on if you're going to, you know, score. And um, and you, you find those, you know. And uh, I've had, uh, I was so blessed with a long career, so I can go back and, um, and name quite a few, mm-hmm. you know, individuals that um, have been the icons of the sport that I had uh, the opportunity to, to race against. And uh, call it rivalry because we're all trying to go for the same, you know, mm-hmm. same piece. And, uh, and you know, so many uh, NFL athletes of today or NBA athletes of today would say, if I got to play, or NFL and NBA athletes of yesteryear saying, if I got to play in today's game, I, I'd, I'd be winning a million times more than what I did back in the day. Would you say the same thing, Mario? Here's what I can say is that uh, um, the reliability of uh, today's cars is so impressive. And uh, you have Honda engines that uh, have to, by rule, do uh, several races, you know, because of their mileage, they have to be able to run under penalty. But these are engines that are stressed to the maximum and they're able to obviously resist all that punishment. and uh, if I could have, I've had so many DNFs, you know, in my career, leading races, and, and always look at today and say, you know what, unless you make a mistake or something uh, today, your best, you have 99% chance of finishing a race. Mm-hmm. So that's a big difference, you know, that's uh, it's a huge, a good difference, actually. Um, so we've come a long way, obviously, uh, technically, in every way. And, um, and you know, just a, a big, a big <laughs> Uh, applause to all the, to the manufacturers that are involved because uh, they're doing an incredible job. And I think along the way, they find this to be a perfect test, you know, to, uh, to go to certain limits, you know, because uh, uh, you have to do it today, now, you know. There's a sense of urgency, you know, which is, I think that's what a manufacturer likes. Sometimes they even uh, they bring in some of their own engineers to see just, uh, hey, you know, it's not just, you know, okay, tomorrow, next week, you know, it's now. And, um, and all of that works. And I think uh, our, our sport uh, gives them the platform to, to do that. That's why they're involved. I mean, the, you know, I'm sure, you know, Honda, the tremendous, very rich history in motorsports with, you know, not only cars, but motorbikes, you know, sure. world championships and so forth. But, uh, and they love motor racing, but they not just love it, but they see that uh, it's working for them, you know, beyond just the love of it. And what's your favorite course of your, your entire career if i could give you one more shot get behind the wheel and race this race on this course in this city what would it what would it be mario andretti you know you're not gonna get that out of me it might come on my now. favorite course is everyone where i want to race nice. on. and i'll tell you why and i'll tell you why because if i would say you know oh when i go there i really feel good i like that i liked every course you know i had the same sort of same approach and I've maintained that, mm-hmm. you know. So um, in some places, you know, you're luckier than others. You know, I won Long Beach four times. You know, I didn't win, you know, four times ever, anywhere else, you know, everywhere else. Mm-hmm. I won, you know, so um, and, and why? Okay, I love Long Beach for a lot of reasons, obviously. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, I go somewhere else and I like, you know, I like to feel that I like that. It's not way, some European so. city, not some uh, yeah, American well, you city. Yeah, Monaco or is, is one that, you know, it seemed like, you know, the shiny star. 
of uh, Formula One, but uh, uh, Spa in uh, Belgium, you know, and the, the, the old Nürburgring, you know, I, mm -hmm. I find I find those in my career were the, the most challenging by far places to race on. And, uh, you know, when you score there, you just, you know, you feel, okay. I think I did good today. And who from uh, the world of sports outside of motor racing did you find to be the biggest fan of racing? A baseball player, a basketball player, a football player that may have you Does may Jay have met. Leno play Jay, anything? Well, Jay, well, there's Jay Leno. I mean, if you want to go with that world, too, did, did you ever meet no. Paul Newman? Paul Newman was my boss for 12 years. That's I guess I Newman just stumbled Haas into that racing, one. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. What yeah, was it like racing. having Paul Newman as a boss? Amazing. Actually, uh, I met him way back in 1966 in Bridgehampton, Long Island. And I was driving a, a, a Can-Am car, and they, they brought him in uh, the race day, and, and they had a big Paul Newman name on the car, mm -hmm. and the car wasn't very good. So I says, you know, I'll tell you what, Paul, I'll put my name on it, and you drive it. You know, that's how the conversation started. <laughs> yeah. But I took him for a ride around Bridgehampton, which was, you know, elevate, of course, with a lot of elevation, blind corners. And I think it, um, it I capture his imagination. And because right after that, he, uh, he went to driving school and so forth, and, uh, and he got a national uh, license in mm -hmm. SCCA, and he started driving himself. And then he had the movie Winning. Mm -hmm. And then uh, somehow he and I just sort of connected at different times. And then uh, he had a Can-Am team, and uh, he invited me to drive for him. And I'm the one that invited him to come to IndyCars. And, uh, and partner with uh, Carl Haas. The Newman Haas marriage was uh, very unlikely at first, but it turned out to be a marriage made in heaven and uh, very successful. So you're saying Paul Newman's love of racing and cars that was of such a part of his life started when you took him for a ride? Is that what you're saying? Uh, that's when he was introduced. I don't know if it's my fault or not. But uh, So are you saying when you take me for a ride tomorrow, my life is about know. to You'll change, be, Mario Andretti? Your life is, is about saying? to change. Maybe a new career. Maybe a double career. Who knows? Yeah. You you, don't give up what you're doing. Thank but, you. I, you know. this is my, I've just been told not to give up my day job by Mario <laughs> Andretti. That just was told to me. That is now a bucket list item. Hey, listen, Mario, uh, when I was a kid, my brother and I, uh, we would go through uh, sports blackout over the Indy 500. By that, I mean we would turn off the radios and Ooh. televisions. We're, I'm dating myself now. There was no Twitter. There was no VCR. There was no nothing because we wanted to see if you were going to win. We wanted to know. This yeah. is a true story. We were big fans of yours in my household in Staten oh, Island, New gosh. York, and for you now to be sitting here on this show with my name on it and you telling me not to give up this job? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I, uh, this, is, this is bucket list stuff, so thank you for coming on. Well, it's my pleasure. And I say that just in case, you know, tomorrow I, I, uh, I pass out like uh, Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> in the back seat of that car. Oh, this, I can't wait for it. I'm looking forward to it. Good. Thanks for coming on. So uh, Mario Andretti. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.